Hi, it's On Point with Wanda Lynn Stokes, News and Talk 1380 WAOK. And in introducing uh, this amazing vessel of God, uh, I like to call her an intercessor or a prayer warrior, <laughs> as well as an author and an actor as well, actress as well. <laughs> but Priscilla Shire sharing with us today and the new movie, The Forge. Hi, Hi. we're glad to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful. Yes, I'm glad to have you 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 know i just want to start off by asking you about the power of prayer mm. you know in the <laughs> life of every person yes why is that so needed when i think back to the war room and yes, and, and studying and and the, the biblical series and teachings and lessons on that why is it important for everybody to know about prayer and the necessity to go to battle in prayer oh my goodness you just asked a good question <laughs> right there <laughs> Prayer is the key that God has given us to access the resources of heaven mm -hmm. so that they can be unleashed onto the landscape of earth. It, prayer doesn't manipulate God. It just accesses what God intends to do for you anyway. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't we use a key like that? What, what are we so busy doing, distracted doing? What are we prioritizing that we have forgotten? God gave us a key yeah. and it's called prayer. Wow. And so it's a shame that we have laid that down in exchange for other things that we think have more authority or more power or more um, capacity in our lives to shift circumstances. Right. But it has been one of the foundational principles of our faith since the beginning. Wow. If my people who are called by my name, if they'll just humble themselves and pray like as a priority, right. strategic, okay. intentional prayer, he says, I will hear from heaven and I will heal the whole land. And um, just like you mentioned, though, I do want to point out, which I think is so important, that it is part of our armory and our weaponry against the schemes of darkness. Okay. So Ephesians chapter six, That's put right. on the full armor of God. And most people just quote the six pieces, you know, the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth yes. and the shoes of peace. Those are all incredibly necessary and important as well. But then in verse 18 of Ephesians chapter six, he says, and pray. Yeah. In other words, it's like the completion of this whole body suit of armor you got on against mm. the schemes of darkness is prayer. Prayer is what activates all the others so that they can be full fledged defense against the, the full frontal attacks of the enemy against your life. Mm -hmm. And there is an enemy mm -hmm. and he yes. ain't messing around. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he is hoping that God's people will do everything except pray. Wow. Wow. That's great to hear. And so is prayer for everyone? Yes. You have to be a believer to pray. <laughs> well, you need to be praying in Jesus name. Okay. Let me tell you that. Let's get the name straight. <laughs> Let's get the name straight. Um, so I do think that prayer is a critical part in the life of every single person because there are unseen forces. And if you're only fighting in a visible, physical way with your words or your money or your connections or whatever, then you are only going to scratch the surface of what is actually happening. Yeah. That can only be uh, pushed against or combated with um, the weapons that we've been given that have supernatural power. Yeah. And that's yeah. prayer. Wow. Well, it brings me to The Forge, you know, this new movie, which is kind of centered around prayer. Yeah. Now, tell us about this new movie. Yes. You, you play what, single mom? I do. Okay. Her name is Cynthia, and she's the mother of the main character. That's the central point of the film. And Isaiah is 19, and he's floundering. He's not a bad kid. He's okay. just in that transition between between teenagehood and manhood okay. and he's got no momentum on his towards his future he's just sort of there and his mother has had enough she's okay. like let me tell you what you're not gonna do is sit around here and play video games <laughs> and spend all your high school graduation money on sneakers that's yeah, not happening yeah. mm -hmm. it's time to man up okay but she recognizes that no matter how good of a, of a mother she is, she cannot hand him his man card. Oh, that another man's going to have to do that. That's good. So she starts to pray and say, Lord, would you please send a surrogate father, uncle, somebody in my son's life? And through a series of circumstances, he gets introduced to a man that becomes, uh, for lack of a better word, his mentor but really is discipleship. Mm. And so this man who is a successful businessman, he's okay. not a pastor, he's not in vocational ministry, he's a successful businessman who's running a huge corporation, but you see that that man's 
perspective is always open to see who is the Lord entrusting to me? Who, who is working for me? Okay. Who am I about to do business with? And Isaiah shows up and he's not just thinking about this young man in a what can you do for me to help my business thrive kind of way. He's like, you know what? I think I'm supposed to be talking to you about character. I think I'm supposed to be affirming you. I think I'm supposed to be telling you it's time to man up and be responsible yes. with your life. So watching the impact of an older man okay. on the life of a younger man, wow. the trajectory shift that you see in this film is wow. fantastic and inspirational. Wow. That's why fathers are needed. Grandfathers are needed. What do you say to single mothers? Because it resonates with so many yeah. women today. Single mothers who are raising sons yeah. and trying to figure this out. And for that matter, there are single fathers raising right. daughters. You That's know, it's, right. it's on both sides. Mm -hmm. And really what I want to say is don't give up. Yes. I want to say don't give up. That parenting is hard when there's two of y'all. Yeah. So, <laughs> shucks, this is hard work out in these streets. <laughs> so I know when there's just the one and you're carrying the load of trying to manage not only your home life, but also you have your business life. There are so many different plates that you got spinning in the air. It is exhausting. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Stay the course. Okay. And the reason I say that from my own personal experience is that I have been married for 25 years now to a man who is the product of a single parent home. Mm. His dad lived down the street but did not father mm. him and his brother and his sister, did not help his sweet, beautiful mother, my mother-in-law who's in heaven now. She was on her own. Wow. But that woman did not stop praying yeah. that her boys would be different than the men that had come before them in their family line. Wow. That's and great. I'm telling you, I, uh, as her daughter-in-law, am a beneficiary of a woman who said, you know what? This stops with my sons. Mm, that's this good. This stops with my line. That's good. And I'm grateful because I get to be the beneficiary of a man who has some character and some resilience and who has shown up as a protector and a provider for me. And then now we have three three sons. Wow. Oh and so God. watching him father these boys that's right. and saying to them, as for me and my house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to shift the trajectory of what it means to have the last name Shire wow. as, as men. That's good. Um, so because my mother-in-law didn't give up, there's a whole legacy of people now who are impacted by that. So I say to single parents to ask, answer your question, do not lose heart in well-doing. Yes. Do yes. what you can. And God will fill in the cap gaps and do what you can't. Right, right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So that brings me to uh, this topic of mentorship mm -hmm. and discipleship. Yeah. Is that a part of why you have this book, uh, I Surrender All? Mm -hmm. What is that about? Well, there are many who are believers okay. who have placed faith in Jesus Christ. And thankfully, that is a free gift. I'm so glad it's free. Yes. <laughs> But then there's a line where you see many people settle in their salvation and they never cross this line over to discipleship. Okay. And the reason why is because discipleship comes at a cost. Mm. And Jesus said in Luke chapter nine, if anybody's going to really surrender and follow me and be my disciple, they're going to take up a cross. They're going to have to deny themselves in order to follow me. That sounds like surrender and sacrifice yes. right there. Yeah, yeah, it does. And so you have a whole lot of folk in church and they have rightfully accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. They're on their way to heaven, but they're not experiencing the parts of heaven that were designed for us to encounter and live in light of on earth. Okay. There's abundant life we're supposed to be experiencing. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we're not is because we actually haven't surrendered all. We haven't said, Lord, I'm going to prioritize you mm -hmm. over and above everything else in my life, which means my preferences, my entertainment choices, the way I steward my money, my relationships. Everything is governed by uh, my desire to follow Christ, honor Christ, and be formed into the image of Christ. And so that's where you see a breakdown in a lot of us who are believers, is that we're not crossing that line. Mm -hmm. We're not full on followers of Jesus. Do we realize that as believers um, overall? I, I don't know if we do until we see an example of someone okay. who is all in. Like, like okay. you know how it's attractive almost because you confuse. Like there is no separation <laughs> in that person's life between the sacred and the, the sacred and the secular. Mm -hmm. To them, it's all the same. They work life is sacred. Their the way they steward their money is sacred. How they deal with their relationships is sacred. It all is designed to honor God. And when you see that kind of a person who drips 
with a relationship with yeah. Jesus. It's not just Sunday morning stuff. Mm. It trickles into Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And then you see them experiencing not an easy life, but the peace that passes understanding wow. or a joy that don't make sense mm. that they should still be joyful given what they're going through in their life. And you're looking at them like, what is that? Yes, yes. And yes. then they tell you, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm surrendered. That's what this is. Wow. And so when you see it on somebody else, and, and again, listen, these been, these are the best questions I've been asked all day. I thank you so much. I love this so much. Because oh, now you got awesome. me all revved up and excited about this conversation. Because in my life, when I look back on it, my appetite for Christ and for being surrendered to him has been wet over and over mm. again because I've seen other women who've been doing the thing, yeah, yeah, who are serious about it as wives, as single women, as entrepreneurs, as women in ministry. It, they weren't playing no game. Yeah, yeah. They they were for real about Jesus. That's right. That's right. And when I watch what it means for them to walk in the fullness of the experience of the Holy Spirit, to have faith and to see God answering their prayers and to see the cadence and the rhythm rhythm of the grace of their life. Mm -hmm. When you see it, you're like, you know what? I want that. Yeah. Yeah. But it comes at a cost. It does. It yeah, does. you got to be willing to <laughs> surrender, you know? So is there a dual reality here that it's not easy sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also worth uh, it. The, worth it. And the peace <laughs> that comes. How do you balance when it's not easy yeah. and trying to hold on and grab some peace? Yeah. You trust that the same God who sustained you. Okay on the mountain is the same one who's going to sustain you in the valley. Mm. We either believe that he is who he said he is, period, throughout every season of our life or not. So even in those seasons where we question God, um, <laughs> you know, in the past five years of my life with, with our family, we've lost 10 family members, mm. 10. Wow. It's been devastating. Yeah. It's been one thing, one after the other. My mother, my grandfather died 30 days apart from each other. Oh, wow. I've lost my best friend who was my cousin. She was 38 years old, mm. young. Like wow. all of these things where life keeps doing the most. I yes. mean, life is out here life and ain't yes. it? Yes, <laughs> yes. And so when that happens, God is so great and so good and so kind to us that he lets us ask questions just like Job did, like mm. seriously, God, or like Habakkuk in the Old Testament. Yes. He was like, how long is this going to go on? Yes. Why would you allow this? So God is his grace is so sufficient that he's not mad at us when in our humanity we just express disappointment or the tears fall. But we can ask questions of God without questioning God. Got it. Got it. Meaning without questioning his character. Yeah. That I can say, God, I don't understand, but I know you're good. Mm -hmm. I don't get this little season right here, but I know you're kind. I know you're a wake, way maker. I, I know you are still able. I see. Mm -hmm. And some of the biggest miracles at this point now that I've seen in my life is not necessarily when he did a miracle and changed the circumstance the way I wanted him to. Okay. It's when I watched him change me in spite of the circumstance. Mm, wow. When I, when I did have peace and I couldn't explain why or how it would be possible, now I know for sure. I wish somebody would try to convince me that God is not real. I'd be like, yeah. you a lie. <laughs> you a lie. Because there's no way in the world that me or some, my father, after having all these losses, yeah, yeah. That, we, that we are sane, that we can still get up and function healthfully, mm. that's supernatural. That is. That's supernatural. That is. So that's not a testament to us. Yeah. That's a testament to the fact that the Holy Spirit is real. Wow. And if he did it for us, he can do it for you. Mm. What does it mean to surrender all? It means to loosen your grip on the things you hold most dear. Okay. 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 So that could be the expectation of what you want your family dynamic to look like. This, okay. is, this is what I thought when I got married or when I had kids, it was going to look like this. <laughs> or this is the ambition that I have set out for my life. This is the career path that I have. Or it could be something tangible like money. Mm. Okay. So there's nothing evil about any of those things. It's just we have it. We hold it with loose palms so that he doesn't have to pry our fingers open when oh. he's asking us to let it go. I see. Okay. And that's the problem. The problem is we hold on to stuff too tight. Mm -hmm. We want it to be our way and we want it to be in our timing. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want readers to take away from your new book, I Surrender All? I want them to 
think about that old hymn, you know, back in the day when we had hymnals yes, in church. Yes. The, the hardcover red, red right, hymnals right. <laughs> sitting in the back of the pew in front of us, right? And there were those songs like Victory in Jesus and How Great Thou Art. Mm -hmm. And one of them was called I Surrender All, the yes. most simple of hymns. Yes. And yet it is the comprehensive statement of what a life with Jesus is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that they will read the book and be reminded. It will be an invitation to them that he is inviting you to loosen your grip on anything that has priority over him meaning it's not that it's wrong it's just you love it too much mm. so it has more say so in your life than he does wow. Wow. just getting all that recalibrated so that he is first that's good that's good mm -hmm. and, and and so as you're moving forth this weekend the release Yes. Of the movie, right? Yes. It's, it's everywhere this weekend. Yes, ma'am. Tell us about it. It is. I'm so excited for people to see it. Um, anybody that saw War Room yeah. and enjoyed War Room will enjoy The Forge. Okay. It's in the same world as The Forge. So a lot of the characters that you were endeared to from War Room, you'll see make their appearance. Even Miss Clara, she makes her appearance <laughs> in The Forge. I know every time in our pre-screenings when Miss Clara comes on screen, everybody's like, there she go. There she go. <laughs> We knew that Miss Clara would be the heart and soul of War Room, and wow. she is here again. Just that that figure of the mother of the church, yes, you know, yes, yes, <laughs> Big Mama Medea, <laughs> you know, right, showing that's up right. to get everything in order. And so you'll be endeared to the characters and the introduction of brand new characters. Okay. And what I'm so grateful for is that you and I live in a day and age where there are unapologetic Jesus films. Yes. That have good storylines. That's right. Hopefully decent acting <laughs> and great <laughs> cinematography. Because it used to be, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if there was a faith based film, none of us was going because right. we were like, uh, this is going to be a mess. <laughs> we weren't expecting we weren't. that it would relate to us. It that's would be, right. we thought it'd be kind of corny and it'd be yeah. B level quality, but that's not the case anymore. There is an anticipation you can have that when you go to the theater, we're hoping this weekend, opening weekend, August 23rd, we really are asking believers in particular to show up. That's right. Because it really does matter mm -hmm. how long the, the release will be in or the movie will be in theaters, yes. whether or not they will open it up to more theaters. That's right. It is a ministry tool. Yes. And there are people that will never read a book that I've written. They'll never go to church. They'll never open a Bible, but right. they will go to that movie. They will go to the movie and eat some popcorn. Sure <laughs> will. With some salt and a hot hot tub of popcorn and a With big a fizzy soda. <laughs> yes. And then they're sitting there thinking that they're just going to see this movie they keep hearing about people talk about. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden in the theater, the Holy Spirit just grabs hold of wow. them. Y'all, I'm telling you, sister, I have gotten thousands of letters mm. from people in from all walks of life, different backgrounds, different countries that they live in. They did not know Jesus. And they went to one of these movies wow. and they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit of God, Praise God. because Praise of God. these films. Yes. So I'm just like, here we are in this day where we get to be a part of the assignment yes. of using film for the glory of God without yes. without apology. Yes. So I'm grateful to be a part Did of it. Did you ever think that was going to happen and play out in your no, journey? No, 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 no. <laughs> If somebody Teaching Bible would, school, maybe go to yeah. church and all of that. And yeah, just. you couldn't have told me in a million years that this would be. But isn't that sort of what an adventure yeah. with God is like? You just say yes and you keep going. And then all of a sudden you look up one day and go, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. How did this happen? But thank you, Lord, and all for his glory. Wow. Awesome. Thank yes, you so much. Oh, for my goodness. Time thank to you. Thank yeah. you. I feel so blessed to have spent time with you today. Same here. Yes, ma'am. You got to check it out. The movie and the book. The movie, The Forge, and the book, I surrender all. Make sure you do it. It's on point with Wanda Lynn Stokes, my very special guest, Priscilla Shire. Thank you for listening.